The dating market sucks for men because women, they all want to date the highest status guys, you know, the very best looking dudes, even below average quality women with mediocre personalities. They all believe in the modern age that they are entitled to that really top tier of men. And this leaves you know, average, regular, nice, normal dudes completely left out in the cold. For regular guys, dating is a losing game. The odds are heavily stacked against you. And the longer you play this game, the more you feel like you're a loser. So when the game is so heavily rigged against you, how do you win? How do you win at the game of dating? Well, the only way to win is to not play that game. You want to save your self-esteem? You want to feel good about yourself? You want to have a happy, fulfilling life? Then stop playing a game where statistically you're likely to lose. I know that this is a channel about dating and dating advice and relationships and all that stuff. And I'm always trying to help guys out so that they can succeed. But please never forget that fundamental truth that as a man, dating just sucks. The video that you're about to watch is inspired by a question that I recently received on Hey Hero. And just to remind everybody, that's the platform where if you, you know, want to tell me your story, you want to ask for advice, go on to Hey Hero, I'll send you a personalized video in response. Anyway, this guy who contacted me, he had a wife who loved him. He had two daughters. He had the makings of a very happy family. But he also had some unresolved issues from childhood. Some insecurities, some anxieties, some low self-esteem that he had carried his entire life. He had that void that he felt internally, like a psychological pain that he couldn't get rid of. And unfortunately for him, he got exposed to content online about dating women and picking up women and seducing them. You know those kind of videos that teach you how to be all suave and live that player lifestyle? You can have any girl you want, you can approach her and be successful, you can be dating five girls at once, you know, you can be a player like me. It is such a tragedy what happened to this guy because what he did is he misdiagnosed the source of his unhappiness, that pain that he felt, as a lack of success and abundance with women. You know, he'd never had that experience of living that player lifestyle and having that abundance and lots of women, you know, chasing after him. And so he began to resent his wife and children as blocking him from the source of his happiness. You know, they were in his way of living the life that he wanted to live that was finally going to cure this suffering that he'd been feeling his entire existence. And so what did he do? He left them. You know, he left his wife, he left his two daughters, and he went and pursued this pickup artist lifestyle. You know, he learnt game, he got into the dating market, and he's ready for his abundance. But once he, he gets there, he discovers what most just regular guys discover, that dating is just an absolute disaster for men. It's really difficult. That player lifestyle that is glamorized on the internet, that is just not realistic for most men. Unless you're in the top, top percentage of looks, or you've got crazy high social status, like you're famous or you're stupidly wealthy, it's just not realistic to expect that you're going to be able to unlock that kind of abundance with women. Unless you just lower your standards like crazy low and just start dating really trashy, low quality women. But I mean, why would you want to do that? For most normal, regular guys, the dating market is going to be brutal. You're never going to unlock that abundance. You know, that abundance is reserved for women. Women have a great time in the dating market. If they wanted to, they could go on Tinder and have five different dates every single night, every single, you know, night of the week if they wanted. But for men, that's that's never going to happen. They could go on Tinder for months and only get a couple of matches. There's nothing wrong with them. That doesn't mean that they're low quality guys. It's just that they're regular, normal, nice, average dudes. They're not in that top, top, top percentage. And Thinking that they need to be, that's such a problem for their mindset that creates so many issues. You see, even if he was successful, let's say that he worked on his game so much, improved his status, and he was able to get into that top tier of men, and he unlocked that level of abundance with women, still, he would discover what so many men before him have discovered, that the prize that you get at the end of that still sucks. Casual sex is not satisfying. It's not. Only men who've had a lot of casual sex really know at the core of their being the truth to that statement. If you've never had that sort of experience, you might think that that's the key to your unhappiness. But I promise you, casual flings, one night stands, short term relationships, casual sex, it's not satisfying. The kind of women who are interested in short term sex, you know, that would allow a man to just sort of use them like that. They're not the kind of women you want to spend time with anyway. They're not high quality women. High quality women don't have one night stands. So that kind of casual sex player lifestyle, it's like 
Eating at a buffet that looks delicious, but the more you eat, the hungrier you feel. You never ever get full. That emptiness that he felt inside himself, that void, that wasn't caused by a lack of abundance with women. It was caused by you know, trauma from his childhood, feeling like he wasn't living up to his potential as a man, you know, deficiencies of self-esteem that comes from, you know, a thousand different social interactions. To think that you can solve that internal pain that you have simply by having sex with women is just delusional. It does not work like that. Now, I don't mind dating coaches that understand that it's good for guys to learn social skills. It's good for them to get some confidence, learn how to speak to women, you know, because that's useful for getting some basic competence in the dating market so that you can get a girlfriend and have a happy life. I like that. I like. I think that that's empowering. I think it's important. But I really get angry at those guys who, you know, there's just total snake oil salesmen. They try and sell you on this myth, this lifestyle, this total player abundance. You know, you can be like me. And they make men feel like there is something wrong with them if they're not living that kind of lifestyle. If they're not sleeping with different women every single week, then they're failing as a man. They are exploiting lonely, vulnerable men and misdiagnosing the source of their unhappiness, telling them that the reason why they're unhappy with their lives is the lack of casual sex. What a disaster. The pleasure that you get from casual sex is extremely fleeting. You know, it's not going to last. It will not provide you with any lasting fulfillment. Let me just say this absolutely clear. The dating market is not a game that you are likely to win. And if you do win, you'll discover that the prize sucks. So I encourage all the men listening to this to please drop your pride. Stop thinking that dating is some game that you need to master, that you have something to prove to women or to other men or to yourself, or that you're somehow a failure if you're not, you know, living it up like you're some kind of fantastic player, master, seducer kind of guy. That's just not realistic. 95% of men are never going to be good looking or wealthy or famous enough to ever unlock that kind of abundance. Do not expect that of yourself. If you want to win the game of dating, don't play. Now, what I mean by that is not give up on, you know, speaking to women, having relationships with women, never talk to another woman in your life. You know, that I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about viewing the dating market as a necessary evil, a place that sucks to be in, but you have to go in with a certain degree of competence, you know, to be able to meet your objectives so that you can get quickly out again. You stay in the dating market only on a temporary basis until you have the means to make a dignified exit. I like to think of it like, you get on an airplane in order to fly to a new destination, to go to another country, right? So the purpose of getting on the plane is to get to that other country. It's not to master the art of air travel. You know, there's no purpose staying in a plane, flying around the globe 24 hours a day until you've watched every in-flight movie and eaten all the peanuts, you know, and master the perfect recline on your chair. If you stay in the plane, you've completely missed the point of flying. The same goes for dating. The purpose of the dating market is to find a girlfriend, find a high quality woman, and then get the fuck out. Not to get stuck in the dating market. For that guy who reached out to me on Hey Hero and told me the story of how he left his family to chase this, this abundance, my heart just absolutely broke listening to that story. Because he gave up something that potentially could have been genuinely fulfilling for him. You know, the love of a woman, two daughters who would have absolutely idolized him as daughters do to their fathers. He gave that up for this myth, this delusion of abundance in the dating market, thinking that he had something to prove to himself, that he had to master that. Otherwise, he wasn't a real man. Oh, God. You wonder how his life might have turned out if he had stayed with his family. You know, in his relationship, if he's being masculine and he's being the leader, then he's kind of, he's one, right? Like he is in control. It's happening within his frame. You know, people are there loving and supporting him. He has control inside his relationship. In the dating market, he has basically no control. He's sacrificed a winning position for a losing one. It's like he's traded in the experience of having a personal chef who lives at his house and cooks him anything that he wants for the experience of going out to some busy, overcrowded fast food restaurant where he's struggling to get anybody's attention so that they can take his order. If you want to win, if you want to feel like a winner, then the dating market is not a game that you really want to play in the long term. And let me tell you this as an absolute fact, any 
guy out there who's trying to sell you on the player seducer lifestyle, who tells you that a life of casual sex is better and more fulfilling than actually having a high quality woman who loves you in a committed relationship, I guarantee that guy has never been in a loving committed relationship. That's why he's cynical. Have you ever noticed that? Like the guys who never commit to women, never have long-term relationships, don't even have the emotional capacity for that kind of depth with another human being. They're always the ones to tell you that relationships with women suck, that there's no point committing in relationships and that you should just keep things casual. They're always the ones to trash relationships. But how would they know? They failed. They don't have the capacity for that kind of depth. They can't actually get into a relationship like that. So why would you listen to their advice on the value of relationships. If you want to know if relationships are worth it, then the men that you should be asking that are men who have succeeded in relationships, men who have found a high quality woman and then got out of the dating market and have been married for 15, 20, 25 years. They've got the wife, they've got the kids, you know? Ask them, was it worth it? I think that we are all products of our social environment, like the kind of people that we spend time with. And I'm unashamed to say that my social circle is largely made up of very happy couples. That's not a coincidence. It really plays into my worldview. When I see people who've been together for 10 plus years and they're very happy and they love each other and they're starting their lives, they're having children, I'm like, yes, these are people who are, you know, qualified to give relationship advice because look, they're, they're killing it. The guys who, you know, maybe screwed up their relationships or they've never even had the maturity to even try one. I don't think they have a lot of wisdom to offer specifically in the realm of long-term relationships. When you talk to one of these guys who has a beautiful, high-quality woman as a wife, someone who loves and supports him, you ask him these questions. Do you miss dating? Do you miss, you know, swiping on Tinder? Do you miss being ghosted? Do you miss casual sex with, you know, drunk women that you met in the club? They'll tell you, fuck no, I don't miss that. Are you starting to see that the real winners are not men who get stuck in the dating market and, you know, completely lose all sense of perspective and just try and master that. No, the real winners are the ones smart enough to realize how much of a shit show dating is. And so they find their quality woman and then they get the fuck out. I know that there are people in the audience listening to me right now and they're completely skeptical. They're like, Alexander, I don't believe it. I see no evidence of it. I don't think that men can be happy inside committed relationships you know, et cetera, et cetera. Once again, I just encourage you guys to expand your social circle. If you've seen nothing but misery in the people around you in the long-term relationships, find new friends. Try and get yourself into a social circle with happy, fulfilled couples who've been together for a long time and talk to those people. From my experience, the only people who really doubt the possibility of happiness in a long-term relationship are people who personally couldn't make it work for themselves. And that makes sense, right? Like if you want to become an actor or something like that and you only speak to failed actors who couldn't, you know, make it, they didn't never got their big break, of course they're going to caution you against it. But those actors that were talented enough or lucky enough, whatever you want to say, it, to actually make it, then they're going to give you a whole different set of advice. I mean, guys who got burned, like they got divorced, raped, or they ended up in an abusive relationship or whatever, those guys have cautionary tales about, you know, dark female psychology, and they're worth listening to, of course. I'm just saying that you need to be intellectually honest. You need a balanced perspective. And if you're not talking to men who have genuinely succeeded in long-term relationships, then you're only seeing part of the picture. You want to talk to the failures, absolutely. Learn where they went wrong, but you also need to talk to the success stories. And unfortunately, from what I can see, men who have had successful long-term relationships, they don't tend to speak out that often. Like if you look on the online space, look at all the advice on dating and relationships and like sleeping with women, picking up women, you'll see that it's predominantly made up of men who got stuck in the dating market. You know, they're there to just try and sleep with as many women as possible because it's on their mind all the time. It has to be. And so they create content about it, but it gives a very skewed biased perspective. The thing about men who have gotten out of the dating market because they were successful in relationships is they stop thinking about this stuff. You know, they don't go onto the internet and endlessly analyze, you know, pickup strategies or female psychology because Arguably, they've moved on to more important things in their lives, right? They've started the family, so they're interested in parenting. They're furthering their career goals. They're expressing their creativity. They've mastered dating and relationships. They've got their wife. They're good. So they, they move on. They start thinking about other things. 
But that's a shame because it means that the advice that we, we are largely exposed to are men who are really stuck. You know, they've got that Peter Pan syndrome. They never want to grow up. They just want to, you know, be players, be seducers their entire lives. The consequence of this is like what happened to that fellow who reached out to me on Hey Hero. Just wanting to learn a little bit more about female psychology, it means that all of the content that he's exposed to is flavored with that, you know, you got to sleep with women, casual sex promotion lifestyle. It, it's such a shame because it's really leading men in the wrong direction. It's one of the reasons why I'm really proud of the community that we've created here on this YouTube channel and especially on my Patreon page. You know, the discussions that are there, I think that we exist as a somewhat unique space on the internet talking about this stuff, but it's not just all about like, we just want to learn about women so we can sleep with more of them and have as much sex as possible. No, I don't think that the majority of the audience here wants to be dating five women, you know, wants to still be swiping on Tinder when they're 40, living that, that player lifestyle. I think most people here are just regular guys who like, yeah, I want to understand women. I want to find a high quality woman, have a girlfriend, be happy in a relationship and then move on, do other stuff with my life, you know? And I, I think that that's what's normal. There are probably guys who are still just interested in that casual lifestyle and they can still learn things from my videos and like all power to them. Everybody's Welcome. I'm just saying that if you don't want that, if you're not interested in that player lifestyle, don't let anybody convince you that there's something wrong with you. If you just want a girlfriend, that's your goal, that's fine. That's normal. You don't have to live up to some false image that someone on the internet has told you is the pinnacle of masculinity. It's bullshit. That glamorized player lifestyle is all flash, no substance. It's just men who you know, exploit the loneliness and horniness of other men, you know, saying this is going to solve all of your problems. It won't. That's not where true satisfaction lies. Real fulfillment in relationships requires time, requires commitment, requires depth, vulnerability, courage, pair bonding. You know, the deeper you get with one individual, the more satisfying it is to just jump around from girl to girl to girl that's not going to leave you any kind of deep happiness or inner peace. But I need to finish this video acknowledging a concept that I have spoken about before, which is sexual debt. Sexual debt is a phrase that I coined in a video about two years ago. I'll put a link to that down below if anybody hasn't seen that and they want to know more about this. But essentially the short version of it is that because men grow up as like teenage boys, full of hormones, full of testosterone, and we want to have sex with all the women that we come across, and obviously we don't get the opportunities to act on those impulses, it means that by the time you reach adulthood, because you've had so many more desires than you've had actually experiences of fulfilling those desires, it can give you a feeling of debt, like you're behind, that you need to catch up, you know, that there's something almost wrong with you, like you're, you're deficient or you're a failure, unless you have you know, met a bunch of those desires and slept with lots of women. Please don't write this off as ridiculous. I have dealt with a number of men, first in private consultations and now on Hey Hero, who have legitimately sabotaged relationships they were in because they felt like they needed to go and pay off their sexual debt. You know, like, oh, she's great and, you know, I wish that we'd met later in life because she's perfect for me, but I just can't settle down right now because I just need to sleep with more women. Lots of men genuinely feel that way. So sexual debt is a real thing, and I have a lot of compassion for men who experience that emotion. I've covered that many times uh, in, in Patreon videos, you know, because it can be quite nuanced. But then how do I reconcile the advice that I'm giving here about exiting the dating market and being with one woman with this concept of sexual debt? First off, my advice is that if right now you are single, you're not in a relationship with a high quality woman and you feel that strong pull, you have a lot of sexual debt that you feel like you need to pay off, my advice is to go and get it out of your system. Act on those impulses, go and do whatever experiences you feel like you need to so that you can be at peace. It won't be satisfying. Paying off your sexual debt is not going to feel as good as you think that it's going to, but me telling you that, you just listening to some guy on the screen of your phone or your computer is not actually going to be nearly as meaningful as you actually experiencing it for yourself, deep inside your cells, in your bones, when you've had casual sex and you know that it didn't make you any happier, that's when you're actually able to let it go. So the best way for you to actually experience how hollow, superficial, you know, casual sex relationships is, is for you to experience it for yourself. And if you need to rationalize that, for yourself, think of it like this. Think of it as a favor that you're doing to your future wife, your future partner. You know, there is some high quality woman that you want to be with ultimately. But if you have that strong feeling of sexual debt, 
by clearing it out now and getting rid of it before you meet her, you guarantee that you don't have to burden her in the future. You're not going to bring resentment to that relationship because of experiences that you didn't have before you met her. So that's my advice. If you're young and horny, go. Have fun. Be young. Travel. Go meet back packer women, swipe on Tinder, do whatever you need to do, get it out of your system. It gets more complicated if you're a little bit older and especially if you're already in a relationship but you still have that feeling of sexual death. You know, what are you meant to do? How are you going to balance, you know, your commitment to this woman with this feeling like like you'd be betraying yourself if you didn't explore this part of yourself? Those situations can be very complex, very nuanced. If you need to talk through your individual situation, hit me up on Hey Hero and we'll figure it out together. But on the whole, when men are thinking about other options, thinking, oh, I really need to go and sleep with other women, the question that they absolutely need to clarify for themselves is whether or not there's actually something wrong with their relationship. And sometimes there is. And the fact that they're craving other women is just their mind's way of getting to that realization like ah oh, the reason why i'm fantasizing about other girls is because this relationship itself is actually problematic and if it is then you need to deal with that and that could mean fixing those issues or breaking up with her or anything in between or maybe there's nothing wrong with your relationship maybe the girl is actually great it's just something inside you that needs to be dealt with you've got this sexual debt you've got these insecurities you've got this feeling of missing out and that's on you to fix in which case my general advice in that situation is not to break up with her don't give up a good thing to go back into a losing you know dating market where you're very unlikely to win the best thing for you to do is to grieve you know a lot of men don't understand this that sometimes an unpleasant emotion like a feeling of regret like you've missed out that doesn't actually require action in order to fix it sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't sometimes it just requires sitting with that emotion letting it wash over you cry if you need to turn off the lights hug your pillow feel sad and sorry for yourself for all the experiences that you didn't have but actually acknowledging that emotion and letting it come through your body that can be a way of releasing it so that you're not haunted by it it's not constantly whipping you grief can be cleansing i know that it's hard for some guys to get in touch with their emotions it makes them feel like they don't have control or that they're weak or vulnerable or whatever fuck that you know a, a truly strong masculine man is strong enough and courageous enough to feel his emotions to actually be self-aware as to what's going on inside him but those are my thoughts on sexual debt but just to summarize the main point of this video it's that the dating market sucks and that most men are likely to lose in the dating market. And the fantasy that you might have, the delusional kind of image of you being a totally suave Mr. Pickup player seducer guy, that's not very likely to come true. And even if you were to succeed, the prize mostly sucks. So please don't feel bad. Don't feel like dating is a game that you need to win, that you need to master. Now, the dating market is awful. Get in, get out. Should a young guy prioritize his career or his relationships? Should he focus on getting the dream job or the dream girlfriend? Should he focus on both? Should he focus on neither? This can be quite complex. Where you put your energy is super important and where you do it as a young guy has massive implications for your success, both financially and in your personal life later on down the line. Anyway, I've made an entire video about this topic and it's the latest video on my Patreon page. If you want to see that, then please go and sign up. It's just a $5 a month subscription. You get instant access to a whole bunch of exclusive content. It's a great way to support the creator and we have an absolutely wonderful community of like-minded individuals over there. I'd love for you to be a part of it.